Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Are we apostolic? I said, are we apostolic? And what do you do when someone says, praise the Lord? That's right. Amen. Well, don't worry about finding a seat. You won't be in it long. If everyone would like to get in the aisles or come to the altar, we are going to play this or that. So come on up. No one will be embarrassed and you don't have to sweat. It's our favorite kind of icebreakers. <laughs> Woo! If you're a guest in the house, we're so glad that you're here. Welcome to Fuse Service. Everyone, can we give our guests a hand? We are so glad that you are here. Okay, this or that. And so I'm going to show you two photos. And ladies, you'll just divide your section in half, so you'll move left or right on this half of the room. And then men, you'll move left or right on this half of the room. Anna, if you'll scoot over, baby, we're going to keep this aisle clear, okay? Ready, go. So, Coke or Pepsi? No, 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 no. Men, stay on your side. You'll just go left or right on your side. I have some Coke men over here. Hey, men, if you want to go to the back of the room, then you can go left or right back there. You have more room. Ladies, you'll just fill the altar, and you can go left and right in the whole altar, okay? So it looks like Coke wins that one. Next. 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 Okay, summer or winter? Are you summer or winter? Oh yes, I'm on the winter team too. Hot chocolate and snow angels. Okay, it looks like winter wins that one, but the men are divided. <laughs> Go ahead, sis. Night owl or early riser? Night owl. Me and Bree Bree. The night owls rule the day and the night. Go, night owls. Unite. Okay. <laughs> Next. Free coffee or free Wi-Fi? All my limited data people say amen. Free coffee or free Wi-Fi? Next. Time machine or free flights for life? I'm going time machine. There's a lot of places I'd love to go. Hey, time machine can go in the future too. <laughs> I feel like a lobbyer right now. Next, one horse sized duck, 100 duck sized horses. <laughs> I want to see a bunch of baby horses. Baby horses for me. Oh. Would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or would you rather fight a hundred duck-sized horses? I have big feet, so I'm going baby horses. Okay, would you rather have a mullet or a 
very unibrow. Jesus. <laughs> Shower and air conditioning. Country, country girl, I'm a country girl. <laughs> country, totally. Next, water skiing, snow skiing, snowboarding. <laughs> Dogs, cats are creepy. They like vibrate and they do this thing with their tail. And they poop in your house. Can't do it. Shark or octopus? Octopus. Okay, would you rather meet Abraham Lincoln or Albert Einstein? Would you rather be an eagle or a cheetah? I want to fly. I totally want to fly. I want to fly. Yes. Would you rather lose your eyebrows or wear an eye patch? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Fuse Service. Wow. <clears throat> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Fuse Service. That's better. I got a couple announcements here to make, and then we are going to get started. Amen. Praise the Lord. Got a fundraiser prep and imparting ministry tomorrow evening. Uh, this will be over in the gym from 4 to 8 p.m., so it's the combination of the two. And then Sunday, Fusion is doing a fundraiser by, and repeat after me, cooking, serving, serving, serving cleaning, cleaning, and putting everything away. All right. Now remember, you said this, so we expect it to be done, okay? All right. We are looking forward to it. Uh, chicken and waffles. Who have never had chicken and waffles? Okay. So you are in for a treat. So it's, it's actually, surprisingly, I have had it once. It's actually pretty, pretty good. I was kind of surprised. So you will enjoy this. This is Sunday morning after service. Uh, so those of you that, if you've been given a job, please make sure you're there to do your job. 
and serve with excellence. Everybody say amen. amen. And then next Friday and next Saturday is our Section 6 Youth Rally. <laughs> Revival. So both services are starting at 730 at the moment. And uh, they might make Saturday earlier. We don't know yet, so we will let you know uh, if we find something out different. And after the Friday night service, there is an afterburner. All right? All right, we got one person excited. Yes. Was that you? Oh, okay. The leader's excited. <laughs> Anybody else excited? All right. And how many of you are looking forward to hearing some awesome preaching tonight? It's going to be good. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I found out I was doing this about when I got here, actually. So, um, but help me under the Lord provides. You know, one time before I went to Rose State, um, when I just graduated high school, but through Rose State, I quit my summer job to start a job at Rose State. But the money I had for my summer job was all I had until my next paycheck at Rose State, which is about a month away. And so we had a youth service one night, and I came with the service on. It could have been money. Sacrifice, I'm not sure, but I feel the Lord give that money to God, put it on the altar. But if I gave that money up, it would literally be a month before I got another paycheck. It'd be a month without any income coming in at all. So I can pay my gas, food, bills, anything. It's like, God, I, I don't want to give this up. This is all I got. And so, but I gave it up, put it on the altar. And I don't, can't tell you how the Lord provided for me, but I didn't miss any gas. I feel my car filled up kept on eating. The Lord provided, even though it wasn't a way that I could tell you for sure. We often hear testimonies of people, you know, getting handed $100 bills with that. But sometimes God provides, and we don't even realize it. So give what you have. Give what God tells you to give. And when you give, the Lord will provide all the time. The Lord, I want you to bless this offering. I want you to bless everyone who gives. I want you to provide to everyone who gives, God. I want you to double everything that comes in. I want you to bless those who give from a sacrificial heart, God. I want you to provide every single one of their needs and bless them abundantly. abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Come and give. It's a trap. Thank you. Praise God. How's everybody doing? I got a, I got two people. How's everybody doing? Doing good. All right. Praise God. Whew. Hallelujah. I got so much on my mind. Oh, I got so much. I got real quiet because everybody that comes here every Friday knows. Uh-oh. He's about to say something important. <laughs> I heard you got your P7 approved. Was that today you got approved? All right. Go. Praise God. You excited, Genesis? I'm excited. Hallelujah. Anybody else already got there started or approved? I heard you all already had one started. You got one started already, bro? That's what I'm talking about. Praise God. Woo. I want to talk on it, but I think I'm going to wait and I'm going to talk about it uh, next service. I got a lot of. A lot of thoughts on P7. Anybody else get one started? Have you been to the library to ask? Haven't been to the library to ask? That's okay. I've been working him to death. Praise God. Hallelujah. Did you get one started? What's your question? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so... I don't know. You got to talk to your mom. We can talk about it after service. Sound good? Yeah, he doesn't go to, he goes to homeschool. He's doing one at um, at his library. Jen and Josh are going to do one at the library. Jen said no. He's not. Wait, wait, what's all this? He's like, maybe, maybe. Get him. Get him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Burns, I think you should start a piece seven at your house, get your son in there, and just really start preaching to him. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> and when you sit down and be like, I don't know anything about anything, all right? So everything I'm preaching, I don't know nothing about. <laughs> you need to clean your room. <laughs> Laundry. You should be doing my laundry. I mean, the laundry of the man of God. Look at his face right now. <laughs> Woo. If you need approval from your wife on the P7, I will fast and intercede for you, bro. All right? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Well, I'm glad everybody's here. Um, this is the body of Christ. You're a member in particular. No better, no less than anybody else here. You all, we all have something to offer. And I expect everybody to get involved in the altars, everybody get involved in the worship, uh, pray for who you feel led to pray for, and, and, and encourage who you feel led to encourage. Amen? And, and I don't know about you, but I can receive a word from anybody any age. This, this guy over here, a few weeks ago, how old are you? He's 14, prayed for me, and God healed me. 14. But it was because I received, when he was praying for, I heard him. I don't do the eye peak thing, you know, like, who is that? Don't do that. If I see you do that to me, I'll walk off when I'm praying for you. Because I, I see regular prayer, eye peak. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, I'm not putting on no show here, okay? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? And then they fall on the floor, and I'm like, Lord, I didn't do that. I'm getting out of here. They did that. He prayed for I received him. This guy right here. Stand up, bro. This, this guy right here. He grew up in Fusion. Here, let everybody see it. Where, which camera are we on? Are we on that camera over there? Yeah, buddy, you on? You on live internet, bro? Woo! Did you say peace? Is that what you did? Oh, okay. This guy right here, uh, he grew up in Fusion. He's been coming since you were six or five. I can't even remember. He don't even have memories when you first came, does he? That's how young he was. Praise God. But he grew up here. And dude, uh, dude's been... I don't want to say it. Dude been speaking, thus say the Lord, on certain situations, and it's been dead on. Amen. But, but we released him. We receive him. Okay? So you're in makes company with, with a whole bunch of people, and if you can receive, God's going to do something for you today. Amen. And if you can freely give, God's going to do something through you today. Amen? All right. So Brother Isaiah is about to come up here and do his five minutes. How many people love Brother Isaiah? Woo. I remember when you first came here, you were like this tall. You were like, when you first came, you were like this tall. You were. Yes. Hey, dude, dude is tall. Did you call him a tree? Dude is tall. And, uh, and he's single. Aren't you single? He's single. Woo. Praise God. I don't. If you don't want to have little kids, I'm going to look this way. If you don't want to have little short kids, you should consider Isaiah. I'm just saying. <laughs> His phone number. <laughs> Can you put the phone number on the bottom of the screen right now online? <laughs> Lord, help us. <laughs> Come on up here. Come on up here. This man has a sincere heart. He sincerely loves God. And um, I really appreciate him. Everything I've watched, he's come in, never been a problem. He does things that he thinks is a problem. He's like, I am so sorry. And I'm like, you have done nothing wrong. He's just a very tender, uh, good young man of God. And, uh, and he can sing, praise God. <laughs> Anyways, I love him a lot. Brother, we're going to get behind you. You just do whatever you feel, all right? Praise God. Thank you so much for the time. I feel expectation in this house, you guys. Like, I don't know about you about this week, but whoo, fire. Okay. I love you guys so much. Like, you guys are my family. Really, really. Um, I felt two directions. I really have. So I'm just going to let God just do what he wants tonight. About that expectation. You put God in a box, he's going to stay in that box until you let him out. And that's just how God is. God is the expectation God. And I hope that you have expectation for tonight. Because He, as soon as you let him out, he's like, that's when I can work. Because you let me out. We live in a society where I got to drive, I got to control everything, right? 
Let him control. Let him control. Hallelujah. What did I just do with the... I kind of feel about commitment tonight. Commitment. If you were at... Um, Pastor was talking about at Pew's prayer meeting, and it just kind of hit. We're always talking apostolic. Talk, 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 talk. Preach, 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 preach. Sing, 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 sing. Right? All the, all the apostolic stuff. But when are we just going to be committed? Just because we love him. For where he's brought us from. What do you want tonight? God can take you anywhere. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I feel like God is wanting to rekindle some things that you thought was forever gone in your life. Lord Jesus. It was Luke 9 and 62. I'm not going to be very long. You guys don't have to stand if you want. Got it? Are you guys ready? No man, having put his hand on to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. When you are sold out to this, you're sold out. There's no going back. And there's nothing out there's nothing else better outside these four walls. Lord Jesus. Can we worship him right now? Lord Jesus, I worship you, Lord God, and I praise your name, Lord God. Lord, help my expectation, Lord God, for you be greater than ever before, Lord Jesus. And take this out, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus, we worship your name, oh, Lord God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I need you, Lord God. If you guys want to come to the front, I think I have one more thing. Thank you, Jesus. Musicians come, I think they're doing music. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel tonight that God is wanting to do something in your heart, but you're going to have to allow him to move in your heart. It's that simple. What do you want God to do in your heart and your mind? Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I'm desperate for you. There's nothing better than this, what you feel right now. There's nothing better than what you feel right now. Don't try and wander away from the things of the Lord. But he's here to try and touch you right now. Oh, Lord Jesus, I need you, Lord. When will you be committed 100%? Not 95, not 99.99 but 100% no matter what the fire is, no matter what the trial is, when will you be 100% committed to the King of Kings? Tonight is your night. I don't know what, what you might be going through, but lift your hands as time to surrender to the King of Kings in this room. Don't worry about the musicians. Don't worry about the singers. Don't worry about the, what the songs they're going to sing. That's not what this is about right now. Hallelujah, I worship you, Jesus, and I'm desperate, Lord. I'm desperate for your move, Lord. I want to go deeper, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord.
our hands in this place right now. I want everybody's hands in there right now. They're going to keep singing. They're going to keep playing. Everybody's hands. Hands up. Eyes closed. You don't need to see nobody. Feel after God right now. Come on, he's here. You just got to feel after him. Come on. Come on. Oh, Jesus, we need you, God. Touch every heart, every mind in this place right now. No, 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 Somebody reach! Oh no! Oh, oh. I want you to come down to the front right here. If you need a miracle in your family, a miracle in your home, a miracle in your mind, if you want, maybe you're dealing with loneliness, maybe your situation isn't how you want it right now, I want you to come up to the front right now. Don't be shy. You want a miracle. You need Jesus to do something tonight, right now. I want you to press into the front right here. Are you in the group? Are you in the group? Scoot on in then. Y'all in the group? Scoot on in right now. I need some people to come up here. They want to pray with them right now. Lord, I surrender all. You want a miracle? Come on up here, sis. Press me. Don't be ashamed. Press me. I surrender all. I need some youth workers up here right now ready to lay hands. Go ahead. Come on, brother Jeff. Lord, I surrender all. Lord, I surrender all. Whatever your situation is, give it to Jesus right now. Give it to him by faith right now. 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray these needs would be met right now. Need be met. in this group you need to have your hands out praying for these people interceding for these people right now come on we believe in a God that's a miracle worker let's pray for these Somebody press. Somebody press.
Now I want you to grab your neighbor's hand and just raise it to heaven. Grab your neighbor's hand. I want you to lift each other up. I want you. We're all in a battle. We're all in a different place. We're all in a different battle, different walk with God. We're all at a different location on a hill that we're climbing up to the top of. But we're all going there together. Can we lift your neighbor's hand and pray for your neighbor right now? God, help my neighbor. Anoint my brother. Anoint my sister. Move in their life, God. Heal. Deliver, God. Encourage my brother. Encourage my sister. Oh, God, we need you tonight in the house. Somebody cry out a little louder right now. Somebody cry out a little louder right now. Somebody, God's moving right now. We got people still praying. We got time.
Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you want to hug three or four people of the same gender, I think that'd be appropriate right now. Put your hugs in. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, music team, worship team. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Love you, bro. Love you a whole lot. Hallelujah. Woo. It's amazing what happens when we unify in this place. Lay aside our differences. The Bible says, judge not lest you be judged. And how you judge, you know, the same measure will come back upon you. Got to be real careful how you look at your brother and sister. Oh, man, got to be real careful how we look at each other. Praise God. Y'all can sit down for a second. Got to be careful how we look at each other. You know, he said that you got a moat in one eye and a beam in the other, right? The other person's. Someone's, someone's sin might be a lot more obvious than yours, but you still got one. And uh, you got to be real careful about pulling stuff out of somebody else's eye when you got a big beam stuck in your own eye. Amen. Got to love each other. Can we just love each other? You know who, you know why we like to argue and fuss and accuse each other? Because the devil's accuser of the brethren. And they listen to the wrong voice. Listen to the wrong voice. Amen. You got to cast those thoughts down and say, I don't love my brother, I don't love my sister. You know, we were doing something the other day. Oh, I can't remember what we were doing. We were doing something, and I saw somebody doing something bad. Not at church. It was out, it was out in the world. And I said something. I said something about him. I don't even know what I said, Brother Craig. But my son, Malachi, looked at me and said, it's better to thank the best of everybody we meet, Daddy. Oh, my gosh. He said people are majority, are at a majority better and good than they are worse and bad, Dad. And I was like, yes, Jesus. I can receive a word from a 10-year-old. Man, got to love each other. Got to love each other. Well, that was just the tip of the iceberg. We're about to get in some good stuff now. Praise God. You can turn the lights on for me, please, sis. With Burns, we love you. We love you. We appreciate you. We receive you 100%. I'm so glad you're part of Calvary, you and your family. I thank you and your wife for being over hyphen. Y'all glad they're over hyphen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I appreciate the pageants. They're here as well, brother and sister Paget. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all a whole lot working with the hyphen group. Um, you just come, you do whatever you feel, whatever you want. We got your back, all right? Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Won't you stand to your feet? Won't you lift your hands? Won't you tilt your head back? Won't you open your mouth and give God praise? Let's just thank Him. Come on, let's adore Him. He's worthy. He's worthy. Lord, you are worthy of all praise. Yes, Lord, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we've come to bless your name tonight. We've come to exalt the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Let God be true. Yes, Lord. Let the will of God be done in this house tonight. Let the will of God be done in this house tonight, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to begin by saying this, if there's ever been a time in your life where you've asked God to forgive you of something, and you believed that when you repented, God forgiven you, lift your hands if there's ever been a time like that. And then, has there ever been a time where what you did comes back to you, and you get to the Lord in prayer, and you say, God, remember when I did that? Do you know that when you do that, God does not have any idea what you're talking about? Because repentance is so beautiful that when you ask God to forgive you of something, 
and you bring it back up, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Because when you repent of something, he's a God of forgiveness. He'll cast your sin in a sea of forgetfulness to remember it no more. So quit letting the devil, the accuser of the brethren, shame you and condemn you from some past mistake that you made somewhere in your past. I tell you in the Holy Ghost that if you ask God to forgive you, He's already forgiven you, and He don't even remember it anymore. So don't, my God have mercy. Whoop. Don't come in here and praise out of shame and condemnation. Don't come worship God out of condemnation and fear. But you ought to lift your voice and say, I'm free. I've been free. Woo! I'm free to dance. I'm free to shout. I'm free to worship. I, I'm free to magnify. I think we need to take a few moments right here and just somebody get free in the Holy Ghost. Woo! I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He gave me a brand new life and, and a brand new start. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So when the devil comes reminding you, you say out loud, God done forgot about it, and I'm done talking about it. I hope this is okay. To, it's time to tell the devil to shut up. Close his mouth. All he's doing is attacking you and tearing you down and condemning you to try to control and manipulate you. Come on, he's the father of all lies. If he's opening his mouth, it is a lie. So you speak truth and say, I've been forgiven. I've been forgiven. Somebody say that out loud. I've been forgiven believe that clap your hands to the Lord and say thank you Jesus Woo! amen it's such a treat to be please stay this good mute music for me please stay and tickle the ivory just for a few minutes longer please thank you amen it's been such a treat to be with you tonight in this house and give honor to Pastor Tony and Sister Amy what an amazing youth leaders that you have That's a little weak for fusion. Come on now. Amen. A quick short story as you're turning to Exodus chapter number four. A couple of years ago, I was sitting at Calvary. I was in the center, um, I don't know, 10, 15 rolls back, maybe in the center section. I was in a district conference meeting. I was setting... I was sitting with Bishop and Pastor, Pastor Tony. There were some other ministries from, from Calvary. I was sitting back there in a district conference service. We, at the time, were not attending Calvary. We were um, pacing out of Brother Matthew Martin's Endure. And I was sitting there in that service, and the Holy Ghost had spoke to me the night before in prayer to come to Calvary for a season. And then it would occur again the next night in the place of prayer, in the prayer meeting that God would speak to me. But as I'm sitting there in that service, I believe, I don't know if Bishop was to my left or Pastor uh, Jason or if Pastor Tony was to the right. I don't, I don't remember all, but I remember Brother Tony was sitting beside me. And then out of the clear blue, the Holy Ghost said this to me. How would you like Pastor Tony to be the youth pastor over your son, Michael? And I'd had a word that night before that actually was for your children, for Michael and Madeline. And I don't know, you know, God has moments in your life where he gives you questions and then he gives you answers and he gives you a word. And when the Holy Ghost loves you enough to say, hey, how would you like this guy to kind of, this man and this woman to lead your children? That's a beautiful thing. Jesus loves and cares about us that much into the details of our everyday life and, and I'm here by the grace of God and God's put us here for a season and I honor brother Tony and sister Amy for their work and their children thank you so much for the investment and the fusion to my to my own my own Michael and 
Madeline, she'll be 11 next year, and so or 12 next year. I'm sorry. So it's honored that her should be a part of Fusion. And to all all of Hyphen that are here, God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for for you and what God is doing in you. And to the pageants, love you very, very much. Thank you so much for your labor, your sacrifice, being a blessing to all the hyphen. My wife is not here this evening. She's at a ladies' event for the district. And uh, God bless her and keep her. But it's just me, and I'm just going to do my best to follow after the Holy Ghost, and we'll just see what Jesus will do tonight. Amen? If you're watching the clock, quit. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. Amen. Exodus chapter number 4. And verse number 10, Exodus chapter number 4 and verse number 10, the Bible said, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. Basically, Nothing's changed about me since you spoke to me. My excuses and my struggles and my physical capabilities remain the same. I'm still not eloquent. I am of slow speech, he says, and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Moses, this man who... Just told God, God, from the moment you've asked me to do what you've asked me to do, nothing's changed on my side at all. I still have a stuttering problem. I still cannot speak well, slow of speech and of slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who hath make, maketh the dumb or deaf or the seen or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Oh, Jesus. He made your mouth and he made your stutter. And if God didn't think he could get the work of God done in his life, he'd have never asked you. But quit looking at your disabilities and quit looking at your incapabilities and quit looking at all your excuses and say, I just can't because of this and because of that. I come to tell the devil he is a lie. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I feel a little preach up in this house right now. Woo! My God, have mercy. Then he says, he says, notice what he said. Now, therefore, or now because of this, go. Everybody say go. And I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. If God was concerned about your stuttering problem, he'd have never picked you. You're, and I think you guys all understand. I don't know of anybody here that really has a stuttering problem. But we all have our excuses. We'd like to say we can't do what God wants us to do because of this, this, and this. We've all got our stuttering excuses. But if God was worried about your stuttering excuse, he'd never asked you in the first place because he asked you. That means you can do exactly what God said you could do. How many of you is going to let me preach to you just for a little while? I preach to you from subject and thought. Make your move. Make your move. Would you pray? Would you have the Holy, ask the Holy Ghost to put words in my mouth to help you tonight? Would you do that? All over the house, would you lift your voice and God... I'm asking that you would take this piece of dirt and I'm asking that you would use me to help these people. These are beautiful people. They love you. God, to every guest, help me to minister to them. Help me to reach them by the grace and the mercy of the Holy Ghost that you would help us tonight to do the will of God. We ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your will be done, God. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in heaven and in earth. That the will of God be done. I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that I feel in this house right now. God, use me to help these people. Give me counsel and wisdom. Help me to say and only say what you want me to say. God, I humble myself before you. That the will of God be done tonight. I ask it in Jesus' name. And would you lift your hearts and your voice to the Lord. And 
and honor him one more time. Would you do that? God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Everybody say game. Game is defined as a form of play. It's a period of playing ending in a definite result. Probably, perhaps, it is said at best that every to every game there is a victor and there is a loser. Every game that you have ever played in your life, unless you just forfeited, and that would probably be you were a quitter, and you lost the game because of your forfeit. But every game that you have enjoyed throughout your life, there was always a winner, and there was always a loser. We all have our favorite games. Some of you preferred board games. Some of you like video games. Maybe you don't like any of those at all. Some of you like games on your phones. Some of you like to play this and that. I actually enjoyed this and that. But there are board games. Maybe you like to play basketball. If I say enough things, I'm going to hit somebody tonight. Maybe you like basketball. Soccer. Football or football. Volleyball. You guys are killing me. Golf. Dodgeball. Racket. Oh, dodgeball. There. There's the vein tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Throw a little ball and dodge a little bit. See, you just like to be mean. See how hard you can hit somebody. Amen. Maybe in the swimming pool you like to play Marco. Maybe you prefer Foursquare at youth camp. or uh, you, Maybe you like to play baseball. There's all types of variations of games. Maybe card games. Maybe Uno. Skipbo. Maybe there's a, this game. There's a put your left hand in. Left hand. We ain't to the right hand yet. Put your right hand in. Put your right hand out. Put your... Come on, I'm preaching already. Y'all just don't know it. Put your right foot in, and then you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey. I just set y'all up. Because that's not what it's all about. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, right now. We got too many, too many playing spiritual hokey pokey where they're just putting their right hand in and they're taking their right hand out. They're putting their right foot in. No, no. If you're going to play it correctly, you got to put your whole self in. My God, let me preach to somebody tonight. We don't need to be passive. We don't just need to put a part of ourselves in. But we got to put our whole self in. we got to give God everything we got. We've got to give Him our mouth. We've got to give God our hands. we got to give God our feet. We've got to put our whole self in. Give me a generation that will not play games when it comes to the things of God. But they'll put everything they've got in this thing. They'll put their whole self in. Somebody clap your hands and give him praise right now. I want to put my whole self in. This generation must stop putting in a part of themselves. I'll do it at youth service. I'll do it at Sunday service. But I'm not going to do it the rest of the week. I'll put my hand in to serve, but not my mouth to give God praise. I want to give God my hand. 
I want to give God my feet. I want to give God my mouth. And tonight, hear me, tonight, every excuse must die. Every doubt must go. Every fear, every lying spirit must be put to silent tonight. I will stomp on the devil with my right foot. I will stomp on the devil with my left foot. I'll take my right hand and I'll not point it at you blaming you or tearing you down but with my right hand I will lift it in the air to the Lord and I'll be like the psalmist when he said oh magnify the Lord with me let us exalt let us I wonder what would happen in this house if we exalt the Lordship of Jesus Christ let us exalt his name together I don't care what you're going through I don't care what you're facing I don't care what you're in if you're not capable of doing your excuses are not too big for our God your past is not too deep for our God but if you can somehow lift up your hands in a how if you can somehow say Lord I put my whole self in tonight I will move and worship, but I will not move in the worship of the worldly music. I am not going to shake a part of my body to the world or to the devil. I'm not going to dance or shake for Beyonce or Taylor Swift or Drake or Lil Wayne. No, 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 no. I'm not going to give a part of my body to the worship of this world. I will not be bop with them. I will not shake with them. I will not move with them because their music is not exalting him it may be lifting you up it may be lifting your pride up it may be elevating your lust but it's not magnifying the king of kings and the lord of lords there's some stuff i don't need on my phone and i don't need on my airpod i don't need to listen to it because i'm I'm not going to move with the world, but I'm going to move in the presence of God. I'm not going to worship the way that they worship. I'm not going to serve their gods. But as for me and my house, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. That's why, come on, if you can worship with the world, but you can't worship God in the church, you need to get your mover right, get your shaker fixed, and get back in the things of God. One popular song on the top songs right now is by the title, Save Your Tears. I'm not saving my tears. I'm going to let my tears flow in the presence of Almighty God. One song says, having it our way. I'm not going to have it our way. I'm after His way. I'm after His will. I'm after His purpose. What about this one that says, leave the door open. I'm not going to leave the door open for all kinds of nonsense to get into my world. I'm going to shut that door and I'm going to go to Jesus who is the door and say, Jesus, I need you more than anything else in the world. Come on, I'm not going to pour my tears out for the world or hold my tears because of the world has to say, no, I want his way. I'll never lose when I deny myself. I'll never lose when I take up my cross and I follow him. I will not move for the world, for the system of this world. It's the agenda that it has. Come on, it's amazing. you got to cover your face but not your body. The world wants you to cover your face because in the name of a virus, but wants the world to be immodest and not to cover their bodies. Come on, somebody. The world will shame you for how you look and how you dress and how you talk and how you live. But yet they'll applaud you when you're living in sin. They'll applaud you when you're living like the devil. They'll applaud your rebellion and reply. They'll applaud your pride and, and applaud your selfishness. They'll celebrate you 
when you make poor decisions and bad choices. But when you do something right for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, they're poking fun at you and pointing at you and trying to tear you down. What's the problem? You're not moving to the song of their dance or to the beat of their drum because there is a higher power. There's a greater purpose. When I got the Holy Ghost, I got the power inside of me. When I was born again of the water and the Spirit, there's more to me than meets the eye. I've been born up in heaven. My sin of God, I feel the Holy Ghost helping us in this house tonight. He brought me out of the miry clay. He gave me this apostolic truth and this apostolic doctrine. He made a brand new creature out of me. You're thankful for what he's done for you. Won't you praise him? Yeah. Woo! He you. The world thinks it's cute for a guy to wear a dress and for a girl to wear pants. It's amazing how it's the moving the lines of separation, of of apostolic identity and of truth. Come on, it's not cute to play church. It's not cute to pretend and to move the lines. Well, we don't want to offend anybody. Well, we got to be careful. I know we need to use wisdom, but there is a message that the world is sending that they want the girls to look like guys and the guys to look like girls but hear me tonight I was Hollywood that started promoting homosexuality in a form of laughter and funny they had put a homosexual character on the screen that was sissified that made them funny that they cracked jokes and did funny things why? because the world knows and Satan knows if he can get people to laugh at sin it will move from laughing to tolerating it, to accepting it, and to enjoying it, and doing it. It is not funny. It is not cute. It must grieve us. It must stir us. The spirit of perversion is not your friend. Homosexuality is not your friend. Lesbianism is not your friend. The way the world does things, it's not your friend. But instead, it's the devourer that's trying to destroy your life. Come on, you're made in the fear. My God, have mercy. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. How God made you. How your facial features are. How your bodies are. You ought to thank God for them. I know you ought to diet. I know you should be healthy as possible. But at the end of the day, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Young lady, don't be ashamed of who you are. Young man, don't be ashamed of who you are. You're a Jesus name. A Holy Ghost spirit apostolic young person that ought to put a smile on your face that ought to make you happy I'm one of his I'm one of his and while the world is making its move to further denigrate and desecrate the things of God it's time for us to make our move we need to make our move. It was First Peter 1 and 21 that said, Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We need the voices that are trying to move us. We need to ignore them, and we need to be moved by the Holy Ghost. I know I hit that perversion spirit of homosexuality and lesbianism. I feel the pushback from it. I feel some of you saying, well, better leave that alone. You better be careful with that. No, I'm trying to save you and spare you from your life being a wreck. I'm trying to awaken you. I'm trying to get you to realize that's the devil playing tricks on you. That's thoughts from hell that's trying to rob you. That's thoughts of the enemy that's trying to strip you. You got to wake up. You got to wake up. The world 
wants us to move with this music, with this perversion, with its dress, with its deception, with its false worship, with its drugs and suicide and if it feels good dogma he wants you to pierce your body and paint your body and mutilate your body by cutting your body but we must be moved we got to be moved by the holy ghost we need the Holy Ghost to move us. We need the Holy Ghost to move upon us. We need the Holy Ghost to move through us. We need the will of God to operate and move in our lives. There are so many things going on. There are so many games to get involved in with your spiritual walk. The devil don't want you serious. He wants you to play games. He wants you to pretend to church. He wants you to do everything that you want to do. But let me introduce to you tonight that the enemy wants you to play games with him and he wants to take you out but greater is he you guys still with me I'm trying to help you greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world I have not come somebody lift your hands and magnify him right In almost every game, making the right moves will determine whether you win or lose. Right? Making the correct moves in your walk with God. One wrong move can end it all. It's a Samson that's in the lap of a Delilah. It's a David that's when the battle's going on that's out looking at Bathsheba down below. One wrong move can bring devastation. But one right move... And correct moves can bring victory and freedom and liberty in your life. Tonight, we're going to play a game. You have the devil on one side, and you've got Jesus on the other. The devil is screaming at you. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and, and make that move. Ever played chess before? thing about chess is you need to know several moves ahead what your current move is going to affect. My son Michael's incredible at it. He knows all the, the quick, fast moves to get you in checkmate just like that. But in the game of chess, there are what we call a pawn. You know what the devil likes to do? He likes to put things in your life that he can, you can become his pawn. He can manipulate you and control you and move you the way he wants you to move. Oh, help me right now, Lord. But no matter what the devil wants of you and the moves he's trying to get you to make, you say, hang on, I want to see what Jesus, what kind of move he wants me to make. You know, the most important chess piece that's on the board is called the king. And we got to do everything we can to protect our relationship with the king. My God, help me right now. I don't care what voice is trying to infiltrate to separate you from your king that's on the board. I hope it's okay to preach like this. I don't care what's trying to get in across the line to affect your relationship with the king of kings and the Lord of lords. But the most important thing in your life is not who you're talking to, how many likes you got on Facebook. I know many of you on a media fast right now. The most important thing in your life Life is not how good you are at some things in life. The most important thing in your world is how is your relationship with the King? How is your relationship with your Heavenly Father? Come on. There's nothing about Pentecost that's a game. There's nothing about living for God that's a game. But the enemy wants you to sit down and just play a little game. You know, I know I know your parents don't like you spending all your time talking to that person, but let's go ahead and just do it anyways. I know Pastor Tony and Sister Amy has talked to you about that certain thing in your life, but you know what? I just want to do it my way, and I'm going to move this way. I'm just kind of 
you know, Pastor Tony, thank you. I know you love me. I know you care for me. Sister Amy, thank you. But, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to make my moves the way I want to make my moves. And before you know it, layers, God, help me right now, layers of protection start being removed from your life. Things that are protecting the relationship with the king start becoming affected, altered, my God. Moved in a devastating manner. Voices that are positive become more and more distant from your life. But it's the negative that starts creeping in your world. It starts affecting the relationship with the king. Nobody, nobody, and nobody knows about. I, I know I've been talking to that person, and I, you know, I've been, I've been, you know, I just, I know I don't need to be, and man, I know it's not healthy, and I know they're not in church. I'm talking to somebody in the Holy Ghost. I know it's a different way that I'm preaching, but I'm, I'm talking to somebody right now. You know, I, I, sh I probably shouldn't, but, you know, I'm going to do it anyways. I'm just going to, I'm going to keep doing it anyways, and I'm going to keep doing it anyways. And all of a sudden, you wake up one morning, you realize layers of protection in your life are all gone. And you look around saying, man, one more wrong move, and I, I got this thing. I'm, I'm going to lose this game, and there's going to be a check made on my relationship with God. And my relationship is going to be totally surrounded. You know, when your parent, oh, God, y'all are going to hate me after this one. When your parent takes things out of your world that, that are, that are uh, becoming a devastation to you, it was probably the right move. When your mom and dad says no to that or yes to this or no to that, it typically has your best interests, and it's probably the correct move and you want to bow up and get upset and frustrated because they don't understand no they do understand because they're seeing some protection being removed from your life and they're seeing the relationship with the king being exposed and under attack you don't understand the devil hates every one of you. He'll use whoever and whatever and whenever to take you off the board of the game of life. But you got to understand, God gave you a bishop. There's another thing on the board. It's called a bishop. It's a pretty important piece of furniture on the game of chess. Thank God for a bishop and a pastor and a youth pastor that will love you enough. Thank God for a youth pastor that will come along and say, now we're not going to make that move. Well, why? Well, Because you don't know the next move. If you make that move, it's going to be a detriment. And if you make that move, you can't see the next move. But he comes alongside you gently. And he said, we're going to make this move instead. And God looks back and says, that was the move. And I've been, my God, that was the move. I've been wanting you to move. That was the thing I wanted you to change. That was the thing. That was the stuff you had to get your hands off. It's time here tonight to make your move. When your God-fearing parents look you in the eye and say you don't need that anymore, that is the right move. When that God-fearing parent or that youth pastor or that man of God says, you don't need that person in your life. you got to love them at a distance. Be careful for them and pray for them. But you're spending too much time with them. That is the right move for you. He tried. He told me in my house. He said, bro, he said, I told my daughter to delete all those apps. I got her to delete them all. But she found another way to communicate with a stranger. He said, I tried to do everything I could to help her. But yet she just did it her own way. What was happening, that parent was reaching across and trying to get that young lady to make the right moves. But she kept making the wrong moves. And no matter how much the daddy tried to help the daughter succeed in life and the kingdom of God, she just did her own thing. She kept pursuing it. And now she's MIA. 
They don't know where she's at. They don't know what she's doing. And a father tried his best to protect the daughter. I got permission to share the story. I wouldn't share it with you. He tried his best to protect the daughter. You know, remove that app and make this move and make that move and make that move. And she did it for a while, but she found another move. She found another entrance. She found another door to walk through. And now a daddy's sitting back in grief and sorrow because he don't know where his own daughter is. Why? It's because because she made a move in the wrong direction. She made a move in the wrong direction. Young men, you better hear me in the Holy Ghost. I feel the authority of the Holy Ghost on me right now. Every move you make is critical. Every decision you make is critical. Every relationship you have is critical. Every conversation is Every text you send, every phone call you make, every game that you play, everything that you see, every move you make is critical. Every move you make is critical. Go lift your hands and love him right now. Come on, the first move the devil's going to make uh, is try to get the bishop out of your life, uh, the authority in your life. Uh, he's going to try to move and sever and divide uh, your relationship with ministry. He's going to say things like this to you. Uh, they don't care about you. Uh, they don't love you. Uh, they don't understand you. Uh, they don't know what you're going through. Uh, they've got something against you. They think something's wrong with you. They don't, that's a lie. Every one of them uh, are a lie. Had a young man call me today. He's 23 years old. He's a preacher serving the man of God, serving ministry. Him and his wife are amazing. They're servants in a church. They're giving themselves to the things of God in their church. He called me today on his lunch break crying, all broken. He said, I don't think pastor cares about me. I don't think pastor believes in me. I don't think the ministry. And he starts going on all these tangents. I said, sir, every one of them are a lie. That man of God loves you. That man of God cares about you. He's concerned. What is happening is the enemy is trying to get the bishop out of his life. He's trying to come along and he's trying to pluck the bishop off the board and remove it off of the board and say, you don't need authority. That spirit that says you don't need anybody in your life, that's a lying spirit. That spirit that says you don't need a pastor, you don't need a youth leader, you don't need a bishop sharp in your life, that is a lie from the pits of hell. I need how shall they hear without a preacher you need a man of God you need a bishop to protect your relationship with the king somebody to stand to your feet lift your hands and thank God for a preacher <clears throat> come on thank God for a preacher right Uh, well, I just, I just want to get you can be seated. I just want to get. I want to. I want to make sure that the queen is removed because the queen can go all over the board. And and if I could get the queen, you know, who the queen is in your life. That's the church. It's the mother. It's the queen. It's the church. You need the church. You know, find ways to be in the house of God. Look for ways to be in the church. Look for ways to be faithful to the things of God. Because the enemy knows the layer of protection that the church provides to your soul is a great layer of protection. The devil, come on, the devil, God. 
The devil don't fear you because you walk into a building. He fears you because you know there's one God. And he trembles that you, come on, there's just one God. There's not two or three persons in a triune Godhead. There's not God. When you go to heaven, there'll not be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. No, there'll be one that sits on that throne, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. There's one God, one faith, one baptism. The devil wants you to move on your doctrine. We're not moving on our doctrine. It's settled. There's one Lord. There's one faith. There's one baptism. There's one God who's above all, through all. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord. There's only one God, and his name is Jesus. Woo! I'm not moving on my doctrine. And I'm not moving towards the world, but I'm moving towards God. I'm moving towards the things of God. I'm moving towards the blessings of the Lord. I'm moving to the things of the Spirit. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm making my move. One wrong move can cost me, but one right move can bless me. There's enough right moves to correct every wrong move you've ever made. There's all kinds of variations. Not all moves are forward. Some of them are backward. And they're just as healthy as the ones that are sideways. Come on. You want God. I'm talking to somebody right now. You think that everything in life uh, is about moving forward. Uh, there are times in life uh, where God will move you sideways. Uh, he'll move you behind uh, because he knows what the enemy's doing on the other side. Uh, you just embrace the backwards. Somebody better hear a word from God right now. Embrace the backward move. Embrace the sideward move. Uh, embrace the difficult moves. Uh, and just know God's got your best interest involved. Uh, he knows. He knows the ending. God, I'm trying to hurry. He knows the ending from the beginning. He's still the Alpha and the Omega. He knows exactly where you are. Every move, every decision. Isaiah 14 and 9. Hell is, hell from beneath is moved for thee. Hell from beneath is moved for thee. Literally, it's afraid. It trembles. It shakes because of you. There are a bunch of pawns on the board, but there's only one king. There can be some distractions on the board, but the goal is to protect your king. And if social media is messing your king up, Get rid of it. If TikTok is messing your... There's just some stuff you don't need in your life at times. There's some stuff. Come on. Was your move permanent or was your move temporary? When you go to the post office and you go to the United States Postal Service and you go to change your address and you go get a change of address form, you're going to have to mark on that form, is this a temporary move? Meaning, I'm going to move and I tend on coming back to the same place. Or is it a permanent move? Meaning, I'm leaving that house and I'm never coming back. Tonight, there's some folks need to make some permanent moves. I don't think you're getting what I'm saying. Tonight, there's some folks uh, that are in a youth service, uh, not just an emotional high, but they make a decision and a choice. Uh, I'm not going to make a temporary move. Uh, I'm making a permanent move. Uh, I'm going to make up my mind. My God, I'm going to do this the rest of my life. Uh, I'm going to be holy. I'm going to live right. I'm going to be devoted. Uh, I'm going to be dedicated. Uh, I'm going to do everything I know to do to make a permanent move in the kingdom of God. God, because it is right, it is correct, it is healthy, it is what I need. Oh, and the devil looks at your life, and as you're you're doing, he's like, oh no, oh no. He said they're praying again. Oh, oh no. No, I can't, I can't suck them into that anymore. They're making a move away from that. 
And the devil, the devil sits there and he's looking back and he's saying, man, man, I thought I had him. I thought I had him with suicide. I thought I had him with an ungodly boyfriend or girlfriend. Man, couldn't touch him with that. I tried this, I tried that, I tried to move here, I tried to surround here, tried, and all of a sudden a bishop come along and just knocked me out of the way. Man, I thought Pastor Tony, I thought I had him, I thought I had him in a position where there was no way out. I thought they were convinced that they couldn't get out of it. I thought I had him in a place of destruction. I thought that they almost said, well, I lost that one. Well, I lost that one. But all of a sudden, a man of God come along and it messed up my agenda. It messed up my purpose. It took the fire out of my fire. It took the wind out of my shell. And look at them now. They're still dancing. They're still shouting. They're still worshiping. They're still magnifying the Lord. Sister Becca, he thought he had you. He, he thought he had you just, just with the right move and making the wrong decision. He thought he had you. But you're still here. Sis, I feel to tell you, it's okay to not feel like you're okay. It's okay. But I want you to know everything is going to be okay. It's going to be all right. And no matter what the enemy tries to do to manipulate and shift and move stuff around and try to get you in a place where you feel like there's no way out. I promise you, when you feel like there's no way out, Jesus can come along. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. My God, I just got a revelation. I don't care how many things are surrounding the king. That there can be a bishop that can come along and jump over three ponds. He can jump over the rook and he can take something out. Why? Because God can step in and make a way and remove some stuff out of your life. See, if I had you do by a show of hands, some of you feel like you're, you're at a place where you're confined and you feel like you're at a place where there's no way out. You feel like your bad decisions and your bad choices have put you in a place in a predicament or there's no way out of it. That's a lie. That's a lie. All God needs is a ministry to come along and say, you know what, you, you've had enough of that. I'm just letting you know there's a better way. There's life after this, and you can, you can turn things around, and you can get back where you need to get with God, and you can get back and become healthy again and in proper alignment again, and you do not have to be a loser. You can be a victor. You can be a victor. You have victory. You got the blood. You got a testimony. He brought me out. My God, I thought I was never going to win, but here I am about to win. I feel like I never was going to get beyond it, but here I am. I got victory. Pastor Tony, you never thought you'd be a youth pastor, never thought you'd be in the kingdom of God. But no matter what the enemy tried to do, you come to the house of God, you got around the queen, and you got near the king, and a bishop come along and started preaching you out of sin and out of the world. But look at him now. He's got victory in Jesus. I was 13 years old. You got a few more minutes, I'm almost done. I was, thank you. She said I was good. You're good too. I was 13 years old. I wasn't living for God. My life was a wreck. I uh, was hanging around the wrong kids. I lived in low-income housing where I lived in uh I had some kids down the road, they were stealing stuff, doing drugs, doing stupid stuff. I was getting involved in all kinds of dumb stuff. I wasn't doing drugs, but got involved in stealing. And man, I was, I was hanging around some hoodlums. And uh, I got to my grandpa's and prayed through one night. I was about 13 years old in the middle of the night, about 1 o'clock in the morning, after several series of getting up and going to bed, getting up and going to bed. And, and uh, from that moment on, I started making moves towards God. I remember very vividly I was, I was involved in sports and 
played basketball and I was doing different things and God got a hold of my heart and I quit I quit playing sports. Remember I'd wear all my tank tops and my shorts and man I just you know I just did whatever the world does and God would move on me, convict me and move me and I was I started making more moves towards God. My family wasn't living for God. My sister was on drugs, but I kept on moving towards God. It didn't matter what my upbringing was or the drama in my family or the past mistakes or failures. I kept moving towards God. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'd be at crossroads of decisions, uh, trying to find and navigate my way in a home uh, where no one was living for God. Uh, but I just kept on picking up my feet uh, and saying, I'm putting my left foot in. I'm putting my right foot in. I'm putting my right hand in. I'm putting my left hand in. I kept on making moves toward God. Uh, it didn't matter the persecution. Uh, I remember getting in the youth group uh, that make fun of me because I wanted to sit on the front row. Uh, that make fun of me for getting in the prayer room they would say I was goody two shoes and oh here comes super spiritual but every time the enemy would try to use my brothers that I love to cause me to set back and move back to being carnal I kept on moving to God every time they'd come along and try to poke at me and make fun of me or kids at school because of how I lived I kept on making my move God I feel the Holy Ghost in this house I kept on making my move Move towards God. I didn't care what they said. I didn't care what they did. I didn't care what I didn't have. I tried my best. I remember I wanted to look my best for church, Brother Tony. I would wear hand-me-down suits and clothes that wouldn't fit me and ties that didn't match. And my glasses were crooked and funny and I didn't look too good. But I did the best I could to represent the King of Kings and go to the church house. But I kept on making a move towards God. Can I preach to somebody in this house? You may be the only family member. You may not have a lot. You feel like your old stuttering prophet, like Moses, saying, God, but my tongue. God, but my tongue. But God, I'm slow of speech. I can't do much for you. But can you move towards God? Can you make your move? Can you make your move? Can you make your move towards and if you can make your move towards God, God will come alongside you. He'll be with you. He'll put words in your mouth and you'll say things. You'll speak things you never thought you could speak. You'll do things you never thought you could do. Why? Because it's saying, God, I don't have a lot to offer, but if I can team up with you and we can make a move together, we can make a move, and I'm no man putting his hand in the plow and look back. It's fit for the kingdom of God, but I put my hands on the plow. I said, come on, let's go. Come on, Moses, let's go. Come on, sir, let's go. Let's Let's do this. Let's go after God. Let us seek Him while He may be found. Let us go after Him. Woo! Somebody lift your voice and magnify Him. I didn't go to Bible college, but I kept on moving towards God. I didn't go to regular college, but I did keep on moving towards God. I'm not saying college is for you or not for you. You do what's best to you and the Holy Ghost and your leadership. But whatever you do, be moving towards God. Be moving towards God. Quit. Your excuses must die. I'm here because I kept making moves towards God. I remember at the age of 15 in Anthony, Kansas, walking to a pulpit at the age of 15 uh, and preaching my first sermon. Uh, what was happening? Uh, I was moving towards God. And here I am, uh, about to be 40, preaching almost 25 years. Uh, it's hard to believe that. Uh, but it all had began with uh, the moves that I made, uh, the ties that I paid, uh, the missionaries that I supported, uh, the prayer ministry. 
meetings that I had, the fastings that I got involved in, it was making moves. Toward God, move after move after move towards God. I hear the words of of God that said to Moses, "Go." I hear him saying, "Go, go, move, Moses. You gotta move. You gotta go. You gotta go and do my will." And years and years and years, I, I've been trying my best to see what the cloud is doing, how the wind is blowing. Trying to make sure I'm moving in the spirit. Moving with the things of God. Moving with purpose. Moving with conviction. Moving with the authority of the Holy Ghost. And submission to authority. Trying my best to make moves. I remember service after service after service. How that when the service would end, Brother Tony, that I'd leave on my motorcycle, drive around the church two or three times. I'd wait for everybody to leave the church. I'd wait for everybody to leave the church. I had a key to the church. I'd go back to the church. I'd put my key. I could just remember as it was yesterday making that move towards God. I'd put my key in the lock. And I remember the click of that lock. And I'd open that plaque, that, that big plate glass door into our little small church I'd walk in there it was dark all the all the saints of God were gone but I'd go find me a place back in church to pray and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost the glory of God would fill the room. I remember sometimes, uh, I remember Brother Solomon, uh, that the Holy Ghost would come so strong and I couldn't even move on the floor because the Holy Ghost was moving so strong. What was I doing? I was killing the excuses and I was moving towards the things of God. That spirit of suicide that's on somebody in this room has got to die. You have purpose in life. God's hand is on you. Move away from that. He Move away from that and start making moves towards God. Move away from those things that's trying to have you bound. And move towards the things of the Spirit. For God knows exactly where you are. Make your move. It's your turn. The hour necessitates it. Your friends that are lost, that are lost, need you to make your move. I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm not meddling. I'm really trying to obey the Holy Ghost. I'm going to quit very soon. I'm talking to somebody right now that your excuses for not doing what God's asked you to do are in front of your face, and they're so big. They're so big, all you can see is the excuses that are in your face. And the answer to that is, is you got to make a sidewards move. Yeah, I see my excuses, but i got to move this way now. I got to move this way now, and I'll get back on track, but I got to make sure he comes. I got to make sure that this excuse right here don't hinder me. Why? Because there's two or three million people in Egypt uh, that I need you, Moses, to go to Pharaoh and tell them, let God's people go. Moses, uh, I got a Red Sea that I need to part. Uh, Moses, uh, I've got manna and quail for the people of God to eat. Uh, Moses, uh, I've got a rock uh, that needs to be struck. Uh, a rock uh, that needs to be spoke to. Moses, I got water that people need to drink. Uh, Moses, uh, I've got a deliverance uh, that needs to come to the people and Moses if you don't go who will if you don't tell them who will if you won't speak it who will Moses I don't care that you stutter speak my word God don't care that your family is not in church that would hinder he does care but he don't want that to hinder you from doing the will of God and the purpose of God in your life lift your hands with me right now and love the Lord
Come on, don't let family drama, don't let the excuses, don't let a daddy that doesn't care or a mama that seems like she's not interested, don't let a stuttering mouth or a physical ailment hinder what God has in your life and the ministry of the Holy Ghost that is upon you. Come on, bro. We can do this. God's hand is on your life. There's things that God has for you. There's a purpose unlocked in you. You can be everything the holy, everything the devil said you couldn't, you can do. Everything the devil said, well, you don't fit here. and You don't fit the mold. You're not like Brother Tony. That's a lie. I'm a child of the king. Come on, I hear growing pains tonight. I hear somebody growing in the spirit. They're saying, I'm making my move. I'm making my move. I'm making my move. Come on, lift your voice with me right now. I'm making my move. I'm going after it. I, I'm seeking for it. I'm, I'm hungering for it. I, I'm thirsting for it. That's it, move your mouth. That's it, open your mouth and make a move with your mouth. Come on, the devil don't like the move you're making right now, but make it a permanent move. Make a permanent move.
Come on, lift your hands and your voices all over this house. If you want to stand, stand. If you want to sit, sit. But make your move right now. Lift your hands. Lift your voices. Open your spirit up. Reach in the Holy Ghost. Yes, I'm making my move.
Hallelujah. Listen to me just for a moment. I want everybody to stay under the building if you would. I remember, I remember the pull, the pull of the world on my life. The pull that said you can't live for God, you can't be successful, you can't, you can't preach, no one in your family's a preacher, you can't do what God's called you to do. But also remember very well the pull of the Spirit that kept pulling me. And I'd hear it, and some of you are hearing hearing the excuses, and you're hearing the family drama, and you're hearing the can'ts, and you're hearing there's no way possible for you to do that in God's kingdom. And you're pulled, you're being pulled and torn almost. But yet inside of you, when the pull gets there, you, you start inching a little closer to you what you know you need to do. And you make another decision, you make another decision. And someone in this house, there's many of you, you are surrounded by excuses. No matter what you try to do in God, the devil's right there saying, but, but this, what about that, and what about this, and what about that, and what about this. And it's more than just being used by God. That's probably maybe not the correct phrase to even pray. It's that, God, let me be teamed up with you. Let me work in unison with you. Not necessarily use me. I, I want to be used to get what I'm saying, but, but I want to be teamed up with him. I, I want to go where he wants me to go. I, I want to do what he wants me to do. I want to be yoked up with him. I remember when I was young, I was hungry. People come and say, you're going to be a preacher one day. You're going to be a preacher one day. You're going to preach one day. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be a preacher. I'm not going to be a preacher one day. No, I'm not going to be a preacher. And I just kept saying I'm not. But I remember at an altar service where I come and I knelt and I poured my heart out to God. I can take you to the spot in the church where it happened where the Holy Ghost said, Shane, I want you to preach the gospel. And when I got that word, as did Moses, to go, all those excuses that I couldn't and I can't, and I don't have this and I don't have that. If God was worried about what you don't have, he wouldn't have asked you in the first place. He sees the potential in you. That's why he asked you to do that. That's why he asked you to go. That's why he asked you to be involved. That's why he asked you to serve. Because God sees something in you that you can't see in yourself. I feel, I feel that the Holy Ghost is positioning and moving people. I'm talking about youth workers. But Nathan, you and your wife, God is moving. God is moving and he's positioning you and he's pulling. You feel that, don't you? You feel that pull of the Spirit. Since you've been feeling it for a long time, it just took him a little while. There's a pull. I'm not calling y'all into ministry. I think you understand what I'm saying. But there's a pull. You're feeling a pull. to saying, God, there's some stuff that, that I'm just going to let go of and, and there's some decisions I'm going to make and I'm just going to make some moves and, and you've had some setbacks along the way because somebody here being the Holy Ghost, as you make moves towards God, the enemy is going to do everything he can to stop that move. He recognizes when the spirit world is in action and he sees and takes notice and he said, my God, something's going on there. If the angels recognize the spirit world, uh, then he was an angel kicked out of heaven. He recognizes some stuff and movement in the spirit. And so what does he do? He sends all of his attention to attack and to fight. But tonight, we're going to quit looking at the attack. Let, let me, let, let's do this. Let me do this. And I'm, I'm almost done. I'm trying to obey the Holy Ghost. This is what we're going to do. If you feel that pull of the Spirit to move closer to God and to do what God's asked you to do, but at the same token, on the same flip side of the coin, you're feeling an attack from every angle. Would you raise your hand? Put them up high. That's pretty much the majority. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to say a little prayer. I'm going to pray over y'all. When I'm done praying, you're going to rush this altar, and you're just going to worship God. We're not going to ask God for anything. We're simply praise is going to break us out of our excuses. Worship. 
There's something fixing to happen in the spirit in this room. Something's fixing to break in the Holy Ghost. There's some of you fixing to go somewhere in God. I'm talking about commitment and a decision and a choice where you're going to put your foot and plant it and say, I'm not moving it. This is right where I'm moving and I'm staying. Then Pastor Tony, lay hands on my back as I pray. I want you to raise your hands. When I'm done praying, you're simply going to rush this front. You're going to come up here quickly. If you was in that category, what I said, you're going to lift your voice and you're going to shout hallelujah. You're going to worship. You're going to do everything. Lord, I've done my best tonight, God. I pray that I've said something to help your people. God, I pray that every excuse would die tonight. I pray that, Lord, there'd be no lying spirit that would hinder this great group of people from their potential and the things in the spirit and being successful in serving you and living for you. So I come in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and I curse every lie of hell and I loose these people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be free, to be obedient, to serve you, Lord, now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Move now, move, move. Move, lift your voice and shout with the shout of victory. Come on, in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. of the Holy Ghost.
if you are done praying, some youth workers are going to go over to the gym. You're welcome to get your belongings and go to the gym with those youth workers. If you want to stay and pray, the altar is going to remain open.